This is the Hidden Killers podcast with Tony Bruski. Featuring former FBI special agent and chief of the counterintelligence behavioral analysis program, Robin Dreek. The trial of Alec Baldwin from the set of the movie Rust is underway right now. Alec faces up to 18 months in a prison if found guilty. It's a, a very interesting case where many people have already been convicted on this set uh, of you know, involuntary manslaughter. Alex uh, facing the exact same charge, uh, but a different reason, a different way of which uh, the shooting took place. He had the gun in his hand. He allegedly pulled the trigger, but was it his fault that what happened Happened. Joining me to discuss, Robin Drake, retired FBI Special Agent, Chief of the Counterintelligence Behavioral Analysis uh, Unit. Trials just starting. Let's just kind of start in that area. What's uh, what's been your thoughts as the uh, the opening arguments have begun? Oh, I have so many on this case. Believe it or not, um, you wouldn't think I would, but there, there there's a few things to, that I kind of think of and highlight with this case right up front. First of all, we have a very very public figure, and Part of the challenge is when you deal with a public figure is you're going to have to overcome a tremendous amount of confirmation bias. Mm -hmm. So you have the Alec Baldwin as the actor. And so if you've liked one of his characters he's portrayed, you're going to have a positive confirmation bias about him, which has nothing to do with him as a person. Sure. If you sure. disliked one of the characters he's played or multiples, you will have a negative confirmation bias and have a hard time overcoming that. Politically, he's very outspoken. If you happen to like his politics, so same thing. We have a lot of confirmation biases to overcome. But now let's look at the facts and remove ourselves from this. He's done a few things. Now, granted, I'm always just speaking from my point of view, my context, mm -hmm. and I speak behavior. I, I, I admittedly have a pet peeve. Mm -hmm. My pet peeve on human behavior is when someone doesn't own their behavior. Mm -hmm. And you start rationalizing, you making excuses, because when we start rationalizing the obvious that are, is obvious to others, it really undermines our credibility, it undermines people's trust in the things we're saying. And so with all these caveats, here's my hard time with this one is, I spent my entire life from the age of 18 in military and then in law enforcement, one of my adjunct jobs in the FBI was I was a firearms instructor. Mm -hmm. In me as an individual fired 10,000 rounds myself at Quantico going through new agent training times 30 people in my class times all the other classes going through. That's a lot of rounds. As a firearms instructor in the Marine Corps, never once were we ever briefed on safety with you got to be careful. This gun's going to go off without it pulling the trigger. <laughs> so with all the data out there, guns do not fire unless someone pulls a trigger. Mm -hmm. He's claiming he didn't pull the trigger. It's completely incongruent with data. So now, if you are unaware of what might have caused the gun to go off because you honestly don't have recollection, then those are the things you say. You need to validate the data of what is is mm -hmm. and say, listen, here's this is highly unlikely, highly improbable. I've never heard of a case this before, but I honestly don't recall pulling this trigger. I don't know what could have caused it. That's another way to kind of frame it. But he didn't do that. He said he didn't do it. The other thing that I have a massive problem with on the data points, so I, I went to his Wikipedia page, because I was very curious. He's been an actor a very long time. Mm -hmm. As an actor, whether you're into guns or not, he has been around firearms on sets a very long time. In 1990, I'm, I'm guessing, because there might have been other ones in here. In 1990, he's, he was Jack Ryan in The Hunt for Red October. There was mm -hmm. firearms on that set. Yep. So from 1990, he's been in that he has been in um, uh, probably another other ones too, but um, I mean, Mission Impossible, Rogue Nation. Um, he was in, jeez, uh, um, uh, probably not Be Beetlejuice, um, Royal Tenenbaums, Mission Impossible, Jack Dunn. Um, yeah, I mean, there's. I think when you add it up, he's he's been in more than a hundred roles, or at least a hundred times where he's handled yeah. a, a firearm on a set. That's and that's my issue is like if you have over 30, let's say 34 years at least of dealing with firearms on a set and you have all these data points of guns don't go off unless triggers are pulled. I have a really hard time with that. The, the thing with that, because he's claiming, obviously, he didn't pull the trigger. Uh, they're saying you, you did. 
uh, they took the the weapon in for testing to take a look. You know, could there have been mm-hmm. something wrong with this? And they did it before yep. the trial. They did their mm-hmm. testing on it. They said, "Yeah, we we think you had to have." And then they destroyed the weapon. The FBI literally destroyed the weapon. They took a hammer to it, hit it, to see if something would have happened with it, which didn't make any sense at all because the gun wasn't dropped. It wasn't, like, tossed somewhere. The test didn't even make sense for the the context to which it was being tested. So you don't have the weapon to even look at anymore or have anyone else even, or have his defense look at it, have their experts look at it because it's gone. That, to me, seems like a, a fatal mistake on the part of the prosecution and the FBI uh, when looking at this weapon to destroy a piece of the piece of key evidence in this whole case. Totally with you. What a stupid thing to do. Yeah. Um, because it didn't really serve the purpose because you have so many data points of those things just not happening. Yeah. That I don't think you needed to put it through that kind of extreme extreme circumstances mm-hmm. to prove the point. Yeah. Um, by destroying the weapon. It's like, well, um, melt it down. Was, Why not? Yeah. It, was, it was a dumb move. Um, I yeah. mean, it was just dumb. It did, but it, I, but yeah. I, I think luckily, though, for, for serving of justice on this one, because there's such a track record of really well documented, this doesn't happen. Mm-hmm. I, I, I think the the <laughs> the really bad actions of the FBI's um, folks in destroying the weapon hopefully won't have an impact on justice in the case. Sick of the ads? We opt to. Start listening with no commercials now and get access to all of our episodes in advance of everyone else. Become a True Crime Today Premium Plus subscriber on Apple Podcasts. Search True Crime Today Premium Plus on Apple Podcasts or go to our podcast page and sign up now. True Crime Today Premium Plus. Sign up now.